we are going to talk about writing polynomial equations. What that means is we're going to work backwards. I'm going to tell you what the solutions are and you tell me what was the equation. So, for example, we have 6 and 3. If 6 and 3 are the solutions, what would have been the original equation? So, well, let me close this. I don't want red I'm marking all over my board. What I'm going to do is I'm thinking about it working backwards. I'm going to put it into factored form. Why would I have gotten a 6 as an answer? Well, maybe because I originally had an x minus 6 in the step before that when it was factored. Now, if you look at this factored form, I am basically, well, I'll go ahead and use it. I am basically saying that this is one value and this is one value and those two values multiply to give me zero. For that to work, one of them had to be zero. So what value of x would give me zero? Well, 6 minus 6 would give me zero. So a positive 6 as an answer must have come from x minus 6 in the problem. Just like that, a positive 3 must have come from an x minus 3 in the factored form of the problem. So I have the factored form by plugging those in and changing the signs. And now all I have to do is multiply everything out so I can get my final polynomial. Well, technically the way that we multiply these out is the distributive property, but we like to use the word FOIL to explain that. So let me write that over here. FOIL first, that means the first term in each parenthesis, x times x gives me x squared. Outer, those are the two outermost values. That would be the x times the negative 3, which is a negative 3x. Inner, or inside, the two inside values. That would be a negative 6 times x, which is negative x. And last, that means the last term in each parenthesis, a negative 6 times a negative 3 is a positive 18. And I have a pair of like terms. I can simplify this by combining negative 3x minus 6x, which is a negative 9x. And I have my final answer. Please remember, we are writing an equation. An equation has an equal sign. A lot of people like to forget the equal zero part, so don't forget. All right, let's try another one from scratch. 4 and negative 2 are my solutions. So in factored form, that must have been x minus 4. Remember, change the sign. Why did I change the sign? Because 4 minus 4 gives me 0. Now, how would I have gotten a negative 2 as a solution? Well, change the sign, and I have x plus 2. Think about it. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so that works. Now, all I do is use FOIL. First, x squared, outer, plus 2x, inner, negative 4x, and last, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Simplify it, combine like terms. My final answer is x squared, 2x minus 4x is a negative 2x. And there's my answer. All right, let's try the tougher one. Three terms. All right, a 3 must have come from an x minus 3. A negative 7 must have come from an x plus 7. And a 4 must have come from an x minus 4. All right, how do I multiply these? Pick any 2. And in this case, it really doesn't matter. So I kind of like to usually pick the first one and the second one, parentheses. Um, so pick any two and multiply them out. So I'm going to multiply these two together. And I'm going to leave the x minus 4 alone for now. First, x times x is x squared. Outer is 7x. Inner is negative 3x. And last is a negative 21. I still have the x minus 4. I haven't touched that yet. Now, I have many students 
who will start to multiply this four-term polynomial times this two-term polynomial. I suggest you to wait one more step. Let's combine these two terms and simplify it first. 7x minus 3x is 4x. And now I can go ahead and multiply. Now I can't use the word FOIL. Something's going on. Um, I can't use the word FOIL because first, outer, inner, last doesn't work when you have three terms times two terms. But it's still the same concept. It's still x squared times each of these. So x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 4 is negative 4x squared. Next, 4x times each of these. 4x times x is a positive 4x squared. Oh, something's about to happen. That's, we're lucky. That doesn't usually happen. But these are going to cancel. That's not normal, but that's okay. I'll take it. 4x times a negative 4 is a negative 16x. I'm not done yet. I still have to multiply the negative 21 times each of these. Negative 21x and negative 21 times a negative 4 is a positive 84. Now, simplify. Combine like terms. I have an x to the third. These just so happen to cancel out. Negative 16x minus 21x is negative 37x. And I have a plus 84. And don't forget equals 0. Hint. Two terms gave me an x squared answer. Two terms gave me an x squared answer. Three terms gave me an x cubed answer. Not a coincidence. Um, uh-oh. I, well, you know what? I forgot to bring an extra board, but just do it on this board. All right, I want to do one more just to show you something very interesting that could happen. Um, let's do a five and a, uh, let's see, three mm, i and a negative three i, okay? Now, when I set this up, and don't forget equals zero, I could make this a nice problem or I could make this a very difficult problem. Um, I'd rather make it a nice problem. So my strong hint to you is this. Whenever you have two that match a 3i and a negative 3i, a 5i and a negative 5i, negative 1i and a positive 1i, they will always come in pairs. Always. i always comes in pairs. So why don't we multiply those together first? If I do that, something nice will happen every time if I do it right. All right, first, x squared, outer, 3i, x. Here comes that nice thing that's going to happen. Negative 3i times x is negative 3i, x. They're going to cancel. Okay. Negative 3i times positive 3i is negative 9, I'm going to start yelling, i squared, not just an i. You can't forget that i squared part. These cancel, yay. x squared. Now, i squared is equal to negative 1. You've got to remember that. It's not going to go away. You've got to memorize that. i squared equals negative 1. Negative 9 times negative 1 is a positive 9. Now, am I done? No. But this isn't so bad to multiply. I can do this. FOIL again. First, x to the third plus 9x. That's the outer terms. The inside terms are negative 5x squared. And the last terms give me a negative 45. I don't have any like terms. I can't combine anything. I cannot simplify this. However, Math etiquette says you do not have 
the third power, the first power, and then the second power. They need to be in what we could call descending order. So I need to rearrange it, that's all. Make sure you take the signs with you when you move a term. I have an x to the third, I have a minus 5x squared, I have a plus 9x to the first, and I have a minus 45. There's my answer. Okay, so that should help you with um, writing polynomial equations when you're given the solution. All right.